The story begins with a man standing in a room all alone, he says that Matthew Gu and the others left, and that he should have left with them. He sits on the couch and says that he shouldn't have left because this room is safe. The man hears a loud sound, he was already confused, and now he is even more scared. A knock is heard on the huge metal door of the room in which the man is located. The man reaches for the door handle and asks if the others have returned yet. He can hardly believe that they have already arrived, the man opens the door to the room. He goes out onto the corridor, there is no one there, which makes the man wonder if he heard sounds. He returns to the room and closes the massive door behind him with a loud sound. He hides and tries to convince himself that it was just his imagination, he's very scared. The man sees the silhouette of a man at the door, which scares him even more. He hides under the blanket and shakes in fear as he watches someone open the door from outside. Someone comes inside, the man asks if the newcomer is Matthew Gu, but receives no answer. He rejoices and says that he has finally come. He suddenly stops his sentence when he notices something. The man begins to scream in fear and tries to cover himself with his hands. Elsewhere, on the street, a young girl greets a doctor who is walking down the street. This is Matthew Gu, a trainee in the surgical department of Lianhua Hospital. He smiles politely and greets the girl back. He continues walking, but suddenly notices something next to him. Matthew Gu walks by, and from somewhere nearby, a pot with a plant falls to the ground and breaks. Matthew Gu looks at the place where the pot fell, someone notices that it is that doctor again. At the same time, another pot falls from above, right next to the hero's head. The hero spins in place, and a falling pot flies past his head, then another one falls, and another, the hero counts the number of falling pots. The people around look at what is happening in surprise. The hero says that 18 pieces fell this time. The hero remembers his past, he was sent to an orphanage as a child, but he went bankrupt, then he was sent to kindergarten, and the kindergarten also went bankrupt. When he was growing up, all sorts of misfortunes followed him everywhere, shipwrecks, accidents, explosions. But despite everything that happened, he is still alive and well. The old man nearby says that 18 fallen flower pots can be considered an attempted murder. The hero modestly says that this is not a big problem, but the old man is indignant when he hears this. The hero says that anyone can make a mistake and that this is a small problem, he leaves the scene. The doctor thinks that life is letting him down again. Suddenly he notices something next to him. A truck rushes right in front of the heroes, almost hitting them. Those around him are surprised and frightened that the hero is again on the verge of death. The truck turns around with a loud grinding sound, without hitting the main character. The hero tells others that everything is normal, but they do not consider what is happening to him normal. The truck stops and a man gets out. The man goes to the doctor and asks worriedly if he is okay, it turns out that the old car's brakes failed. The hero calmly says that everything is fine with him, and the driver is surprised that he was too calm about this. The hero begins to leave, but the driver is worried and says that he should conduct an examination. The driver asks if the main character knows where the psychiatric ward is, since he is a plumber and needs to fix the sink there, the hero says he will take him there. The driver says he is the most sane accident victim he has ever met, Matthew Gu says that he is a surgeon in the department, so he can conduct it. They both enter the elevator, and upon entering, the hero notices something in the plumber's bag. There is a newspaper there, which states that an unexpected fire at the school claimed the lives of several days. The driver asks how the hero managed to evade the car, and Matthew Gu replies that life forced him. Suddenly a loud sound is heard, the elevator begins to shake, and the driver fearfully asks if an earthquake has begun. The hero thinks about when the endless misfortunes that haunt him will end. The light turns off and the shaking ends, the driver asks what sound he hears. The hero thinks dissatisfied about what is happening. They see a message floating right in the air in front of them that the game is about to begin a global collapse, and that all players are human. Both guys look in surprise at the message that appears, they are completely bewildered and ask what is happening here. The system notice says that 99% of the world's population is substandard, so the game is designed to help humanity evolve and develop. Both guys read about how it's a survival game, the main character feels curious about the game. The plumber reads that death within the game will not be real, but the pain will still feel real. The main character notices that in his description there is nothing about fake death. He thinks that other players besides him cannot die, but still presses the button to start the game. 
He thinks that he will soon go crazy from such a life, and he is transported somewhere. He asks the plumber if he is still here, but receives no answer from him. The hero looks at the notification, which says that he needs to wait for the player information to be processed. Finally, the download ends and the main character is asked to enter his game name. The hero nervously thinks about what name he should choose in the game. He enters text into the name box. The system notification says that the name daddy is already taken, the hero swears in disappointment. Next, the system starts scanning the characteristics of the main character. After this, he is asked to choose his initial clothes, options include no clothes, a bathing suit and his current white robe. He decides to leave the clothes as they are, the system says that the character has been successfully created, and now he needs to listen to the rules of the game. Immediately after the start of the game, everyone who decides to play must use their ticket. Everyone gets the first ticket free of charge. The hero decides to take a risk and enter the game. He walks forward and sees a large metal door in front of him, he comments that the place looks abandoned. He goes to the cash register, but there is no one there. He looks around, but doesn't find anyone, he decides that there must be a portal somewhere nearby. He sees an eerie looking structure that emits a purple glow, he is surprised when he realizes that this is the portal. The head on top of the portal comes to life and opens its mouth. The hero looks in fear as the creature moves its limbs. He sees a new notice that says that in addition to ordinary tickets, there are special ones that are more difficult to get, they can be used even if there is no ticket office nearby. Further, the notification states that tickets can be group or single, the hero decides to look at his characteristics and presses the appropriate button. Its characteristics are unknown, also on the page is his nickname, the star offended by God. The hero thinks dissatisfied about his nickname, and about the fact that he is actually a good doctor. A man appears nearby who says that it is very interesting when he looks at the characteristics of the hero. The hero is frightened by the sudden appearance of a stranger. The man says he is a non-player character, an usher, he tells the hero to come and hit him. He picks up the ticket and begins to give instructions on how to use it. At the same moment, the hero hits him in the face with his fist. The hero says that they just met, but the usher constantly repeats his request to hit him. The hero enters the ticket, the ticket taker is displeased and says that it was not a request, but just such a text, and tells him to take the ticket and leave here. The hero says that he has gone and that they will see each other again, but the usher says that after this he will not want to see him again. The portal changes, its surface becomes similar to space, the hero goes inside. The main character passes through the portal and finds himself on the other side. Having passed, he finds himself at a height of several meters, and immediately begins to rapidly fall down. He falls into the corridor of the building, the hero hits the floor and complains that it hurt. The hero reads the information on the window that appears, it states that this mission takes place in a school where students died, which is why there are ghosts there. The window says that players need to pretend to be a teacher at this school, find out the truth about what happened here and not give away that they are real people. The hero looks out the window, there you can see a realistic abandoned street. The hero thinks that this simulation cannot be distinguished from reality, a familiar plumber approaches him, surprised that he is here too. His name is Van, he says that here you need to pretend to be living people. The plumber complains and says that he wants to go home, the hero looks at the man in the corridor. He recognizes the guy who is standing in a thoughtful pose, this is Chu Changa. The hero remembers that he and Chu Changa were once childhood friends. The hero gets angry when he sees that Chu Changa is ignoring him and says that he remains as arrogant as he once was. Next he sees Guli, a young guy who calmly talks about the task, but his fear is revealed by the fact that he is shaking all over. Next, he sees Zhao Hongxiu's mother, who notices an unpleasant smell in the abandoned building. The girl named Qi Xin Bing Lin is scared and says that she wants to go back home. Chu Changa tells everyone to remain calm, he reminds them that this game will help them evolve, as stated in the rules. He says that now they all need to find a way to complete this task. He says that the real world is probably in chaos right now, and that if they can find the tickets, it will help them in the real world too. Chu Changa says that now it will be survival of the fittest, he reminds them that they need to pretend to be teachers and not give away the fact that they are real people. He explains that based on how the mission was set up, if they were discovered, the mission would not automatically fail. Chu Changa decides that they need to sort out which subjects they will teach, and someone suggests looking up information in the staff room. 
The main character notices something behind him and turns around, but there is nothing there anymore. He wonders if it was an illusion or something more. The main character opens the door and goes into the teacher's office along with the rest of the group. He sees that the name of the teacher is indicated on each of the tables, there is also a textbook for the corresponding lesson. The main character picks up a textbook from his desk, his subject turns out to be politics. Chu Changa says that he has biology, and the hero asks if they were given the most inappropriate items. They ask who got what item, and the others answer what kind of items they have. Chu Changa notices that there is another teacher's desk in the office and approaches him. It states that the literature teacher is Xiao Bang, Van notices that their group doesn't have a member with that name. Chu Changa says that there are only six people in their group, and that perhaps she is the real teacher here, they decide to look at the class schedule. The hero reads that today's lesson is physical education, which will last 45 minutes. Van asks if he can skip class since he is a physical education teacher, the hero replies that in this case he will die immediately, Van becomes scared. Chu Changa reads that today there will be physical education, then politics and history, after this there will be no lessons. Suddenly the doors open and someone enters the office, the group members look at the door in fear. There turns out to be a ghost child who turns to the teacher. The hero looks at him for a moment, without answering. He then takes a chair and sits on it, and invites the student to enter. He says that he is the prefect of the second class, and that he came to remind the physical education teacher that his lesson is starting soon. The boy says that Matthew Gu is sitting in the wrong place, and that this is the place of teacher Xiao Bang, the hero replies that he knows it. The boy asks who their PE teacher will be, Van nervously says it's him. The boy puts notebooks on the table and says that these are workbooks for the lesson, he tells the teacher not to be late. The boy turns around and begins to leave the teacher's office. Before leaving, he turns around and looks at the group's area with an eerie gaze. The main character notices that the boy is worried about Xiao Bang, Chu Changa suggests that it may be related to the accident that resulted in the death of the children. Wang asks Matthew Gu where the second class office is, he assumes that if the students of the first grade study on the first floor, then the students of the second probably study on the second or third. Matthew Gu says that the next class is his, so after PE he will find Wang, Chu Changa wonders if something unexpected will happen during the lesson. The hero draws attention to the book that lies nearby and to the note under it, which says that love is the best form of education. Chu Changa says that in order to leave this place they need to complete the task or die. The hero thinks that he is the only one who does not have a function that makes death in the game unreal. Van walks down the corridor and suddenly steps on something soft. He gets scared and asks what it is. Van looks down and sees that it is the lifeless body of a rabbit, he doesn't understand where he came from here. He hears from himself the voice of a student who addresses him, he is shaking with fear. A student with a creepy look shows where to go. Van looks at the ghostly child, who has a purple glow emanating from him. Van opens the door to their classroom. There he sees a whole class of ghost children who are staring at him. He thinks about how this will all end as soon as possible. He begins to read from the textbook that a physical education lesson contributes to the physical development of students and improves their teamwork skills. One of the students calls out to him, but Van does not immediately respond. When Van asks what's wrong, the textbook suggests playing a game since his lesson is too boring. Van fearfully asks what game they want to play, and the child replies that they want to tell stories. He explains that each participant is required to tell their worst memory. Van thinks that his worst memory is happening right now, in this classroom. The child says that they will start with the last student on the last desk. Wang suggests teaching the lesson first, and then telling stories outside of class. The student tells the last student to begin his creepy story. He says he and his friends once stole 5 yuan to buy soda from a store. Van says that stealing is wrong and once again suggests going back to the lesson. The next student tells his story about how he didn't like his newborn brother so he painted his face with a marker. The student goes on to say that he told his parents that his brother did it himself. The next student says that she didn't like her aunt's dog, so she fed her a chicken bone. The students continue to tell creepy stories, one talks about how he stole his neighbor's rabbit. Van becomes even more horrified when he hears more and more terrible stories from his students. He can't stand it and starts screaming loudly. He begins to move away from the children in fear. Van thinks that they are monsters for doing so many terrible things at such a young age. 
One of the children asks if the teacher is okay, Van shakes with fear and says nothing. After that, they continue the game and their stories. The students continue their stories, each with a gruesome ending, one of the students threw the girl from the window. Another in his story killed his younger sister. They keep talking about the murders. Another student killed his grandfather. Van, horrified, tells them to stop telling it. Suddenly everything goes quiet and the students say nothing more, Van wonders if they are done with their terrible game. The students tell him that now it is his turn to tell his creepy story. The student says that if he has nothing to tell, it will mean that he is different from them. Van stutters, trying to say something, he does not know what to do. The children urge him on and tell him to quickly tell his story. Van screams in despair that he has nothing to tell. Suddenly the door of the room opens, Matthew Gu is standing there, asking why everyone is standing. Van runs towards him with relief and is glad that he has finally come. Chu Changa, who came with the main character, asks what is happening here. Van is shaking with fear and tries to explain what the children were doing. The child says they were playing a game and asks what Matthew Gu is doing here, he replies that the lesson is already over and that he came to see them. The child says that they haven't finished the game yet, and that teacher Wang needs to tell his story. Matthew Gu says that the teacher needs to rest since the lesson is already over, and that the game can be continued later. Chu Changa takes Wang away, who asks worriedly about Matthew Gu. Chu Changa says that he has a lesson now, Wang is worried about the children, but Chu Changa is confident that Matthew Gu can handle it, since he has seen a lot of life. Matthew Gu is left alone in the office with the children, their head boy asks if he is their new politics teacher. The main character introduces himself and the student asks if he can ask him one question. He asks what Matthew Gu fears more than anything in the world. The student asks what teacher Gu is most afraid of in the world. Matthew Gu leans down and tells the student in his ear to call him Mr. Gu, otherwise he will break his neck. The hero goes to the teacher's desk, he announces that the students should take their places. He starts the lesson, he is completely calm and not afraid of children. After some time, the door to the room opens. Matthew Gu leaves the office, Van notes that there are still 10 minutes left until the end of class and asks why he left so early, the hero replies that he became bored reading the textbook. The hero comes to the teacher's office and says that he learned something interesting, Chu Changa wonders what he found out. The hero comes to the table and says that the game conditions indicated 29 students, but he counted only 28. The hero says that he asked around and found out that the missing student's name is Li Xian Mei, and that no one in the class likes her. Wang says that the children are very scary and told bloodthirsty stories in his class. Another member says that he wouldn't be afraid of children, and Van says that he just didn't see them. The hero asks if the children mentioned the missing teacher in their stories. Van replies that they didn't mention the teacher, then he suddenly remembers something. He says the children's stories included a girl whom they all bullied. The hero asks if they were all talking about the same student. Van says he doesn't know, but the kids mentioned that they stole her rabbit and blamed her for stealing the money. The participants are horrified that children could do such terrible things. The hero says that if these stories are true, then the solution is very simple, after death, the girl became a vengeful ghost and cursed the rest of the class. Chu Changa says that in that case, they need to find out who this girl is and find out the role of teacher Xiao Bang in this story. The main character says that while they have time, they need to find the school for some kind of crime. Several members refuse to go around the school and decide to stay here, Ban decides to go. Chu Changa says that he and Wang will search the main building and asks where Matthew Gu will be going, he replies that he will just look around. The main character goes outside and heads towards the closed gates of the school. Approaching the gate, he sees that strips of paper are glued to it, he takes one of them. He sees a note on the sheet that says Rome City Police have been notified. The hero looks at the notice board outside the gate, he notices that something is written there about a fire, but at such a distance he can't see it well. When he put his hand on the bars, one of the rods immediately fell off. The hero looks at the piece in his hand and is surprised at how easily it broke. Matthew Gu returns back to the group and asks if they found anything. Chu Changa says they found a warehouse with a locked door that had recently been replaced, they also found traces of a fire. The hero says that this is an amazing coincidence, Chu Changa asks what's wrong. The hero puts a sheet of paper on the table and shows its contents. Van reads what it says about the fire in the sixth grade, 
the hero says that he tore it off the notice board. Chu Changa reads that the fire occurred on the 26th of November 2008, the fire was planned, evidence was found indicating intentional arson. One reads that there were 29 victims in total, 28 students and one teacher, Xiao Bang. Chu Changa reflects on what happened. He suggests that there was one more student besides the 28. He finds a mention and photo of Li Xian Mei, the newspaper states that she disappeared that night. One notes that there must then be 29 dead in the fire. Chu Changa suggests that Li Xian Mei also died that day, but her body was not found. He says there are two options, the first is that she was killed, and she cursed the rest of the students, turning into a vengeful ghost. The second possibility is that she caused the fire, after which all those who died cursed her. Chu Changa says he has two theories, either she was killed and her spirit killed everyone with a fire, or she set the building on fire and everyone killed came back for revenge. Matthew Gu says that evil spirits can kill people much easier, and they do not need to gather everyone in one place and start a fire, he decides that the second option is more plausible. Wang thinks about what is the reason for Xiao Bang's existence then, he says it's too difficult a task. Matthew Gu says that they can find the student and get all the necessary information out of him. Wang asks in surprise if he is serious, and Matthew Gu answers positively. The hero asks the others if they want him to get information. Chu Changa says that the door was closed and that the dorm will open at 4 o'clock, Wang says that the previous teacher has not returned yet. Suddenly, Chu Changa turns to Master Xiao Bang. Someone's silhouette appears at the teacher's door, and the door begins to creak open. Someone appears in the passage, Van is scared by this. It turns out to be one of the group members, he asks what is happening to them. Van complains that he was scared and that he almost went crazy. He says that at first he was afraid of the children, but then he realized that they only bully the weak, and that there were no violations in his lesson. Matthew Gu says that since he is back, they should go to the dorm. After some time, it is late evening outside. The whole group goes outside, the girls walk together and shake with fear. Van says the closer they get, the scarier it gets. The participant tells him not to raise Arnica over nonsense. They go inside and the guy says that he and Matthew Gu happen to be roommates. Wang says that he and Chu Changa are nearby, so they can call them if necessary. Chu Changa comes to the door and says that this is Xiao Bang's room, but it is locked. Matthew Gu says that at least they can look there later. Matthew Gu goes to his room, it is clean, tidy and looks untouched. His roommate says he feels tired even though he's in the game, he asks if the main character was scared while teaching the lesson. Matthew Gu passes by the window and looks there, his neighbor asks what he is looking at. Suddenly a creepy face appears in the window, the guy starts screaming in horror. Van runs into the room and asks what happened here, and why the guy who behaved like a hero in the morning is screaming. The hero points to the window and says that they just saw a face. He turns around to look there, but there is nothing there anymore. Matthew Gu explains to Wang and Chu Changa that they need to be careful in this place. He says they are everywhere here, a face becomes visible at the door. Matthew Gu once again recommends being prepared for anything. The main character says that they will wait until midnight, then they will begin to act, Chu Changa tells him to take care of himself. The protagonist's neighbor asks someone to check under his bed because he thinks there is someone there. The hero looks down and says that there is nothing there and that he shouldn't worry. He says he doesn't need to worry and that under the bed is empty. The hero begins to leave the room, and his frightened neighbor asks if he is leaving already. He gets scared and says that it is dangerous outside and that he should stay here, safe. The hero doesn't answer, leaves the room and closes the door behind him. The neighbor asks if the hero will come out, and he answers yes. The neighbor says it's not worth doing and it's better to stay safe. The hero refuses and says that they need to train their nerves. The neighbor tells the hero not to forget to lock the door, and he leaves. The hero knocks on the door of the room and asks if anyone is here. He receives no answer and decides to open the door inside. The hero goes inside and sees that there is no one there, he thinks it's very strange. The hero looks at the phone and thinks that the connection here is not working, so it will be very difficult to find friends. The hero believes that it will be useless to gather everyone here together, so there is no need to try. He wonders if Wang and Chu Changa have encountered something unexpected, but decides that the most important thing now is to find Teacher Kosaku. He approaches the door to Teacher Kosaku's room, he wonders if he's not inside right now. He touches the door and it opens, the hero is surprised that it was unlocked. 
He flicks the switch several times, but to no avail, the room remains dark. The hero takes the phone and uses its flashlight, he looks around the room. The hero thinks that the lock, apparently, was broken into, he notices a book lying on the bed. The hero comes closer and sees that it is not a book, but someone's diary. The hero sits down on the bed and decides to see if there are any clues in the diary. He sees a page where it is written that the ghost is cultivating a soul curse. The page describes a curse to be placed on a ghost who has returned from death for revenge. The page says what needs to be done 10 years after the death of a person who turned into a spirit, but then the page is torn. Matthew Gu decides to look through the remaining pages of the diary. The hero reads a spell that is written in the book. He is surprised that Kosaki has records of such important spells. He reads that to use the spell, you need a person's body or his ashes after cremation. He suggests that it is possible that the dead Kosaku cast a spell on the Xian Mei, and she burned herself in revenge. The hero decides to take a break and explore some other place in search of clues. Matthew Gu notices something under the bed and shines his phone there, he is unhappy and swears. Where does the head of a creepy ghost come out from, which bites the main character? The hero calmly pushes the head away with his foot, commenting on the ugliness of the creature. He leaves Kosaku's room and heads down the corridor. He thinks that probably no one has returned yet. The hero thinks that evidence or clues for this case can be found on the fourth floor. Suddenly the hero notices someone's running shadow, which is hiding from him in the corridor. He wonders if it is Kosaku and decides to follow the shadow. He runs in the footsteps of the shadow, and thinks that it is leading him to the second floor. He runs into the corridor, but there is no one there, he looks into the darkness of the corridor. The protagonist's neighbor thinks that he should leave, since everyone has already left. Then he thinks that it is not worth leaving, since it is safe here, he is shaking with fear. He hears a creak coming from the door, he thinks why Matthew Gu came so early. The sound stops and he approaches the door, not sure if he heard it wrong. The guy looks at the door, trying to see what's on the other side. He peers through the door's peephole. There's no one there, but you can still hear the creaking outside. In the dark, gloomy corridor the creaking continues to bifurcate. The protagonist's neighbor gets even more scared. He hides under the blanket and tries to convince himself that he didn't hear anything. He wonders if it's possible that this sound is made by Matthew Gu, he looks nervously and fearfully at the door handle. He looks out, thinking that Matthew Gu has already arrived. Suddenly he sees something in front of him and begins to scream furiously. Matthew Gu walks down the corridor, he reflects on how history is always strikingly similar. He picks up a small trinket from the floor that looks like a skull. He notices the girl and assumes that she is also a player who is looking for clues and tips for the task. He notices her entering the room and wonders what she is doing inside. He runs inside after her into the room to see what she's doing. Another member sits and thinks in despair that Aunt Zhao is dead. A few minutes ago, she and Zhao were discussing whether ghosts would recognize that they were living people. They hear a knock on the door and a voice that says it's Chu Changa and tells them to open the door. Zhao opens the door and looks around, she doesn't see anyone and asks where Chu Changa is. Suddenly, a ghost appears from the ceiling right next to her. Zhao begins to scream at the top of his voice in fear. At the same moment, the ghost kills her, tearing her head off her shoulders. Her neighbor watches in horror as her lifeless body falls to the ground. The girl tries not to scream and covers her mouth with her hands so as not to reveal her fear. She sees a ghost in the process of the door, who chuckles loudly. She cries with fear and thinks that she can no longer stay in this room, and that she needs to run away, since the ghosts may return. She covers her head with her hands and thinks that she checked all the rooms, and it should be safe here. Suddenly she hears a knock on her door, she gets scared and gets to her feet. The girl thinks that another ghost has come and props the door so that no one can enter. The knocking does not stop, and she begins to scream that they should not approach her and go away. The girl sees the silhouette of a creepy head in the aisle. She looks at the silhouette in horror. The girl shakes with fear when a creature passes by her room. She thinks that he is now in the next room and can come in at any moment, she decides she needs to escape. She sharply and decisively opens the door to the corridor. Right in front of her is a creepy humanoid creature looking at her. The creature begins to growl when it sees the girl, the girl screams in fear and begins to run away from the ghost. She runs out of the corridor and doesn't know where to go now. She finds the first door she comes across and runs inside. The girl runs into the room, running away from the ghosts. She quickly locks the door behind her. 
The girl decides to look through the peephole and she hears Van's voice from the next room, who says that it's cool here. She relaxes when she realizes there are other people there. Looking around the room, she notices a piece of paper, she asks what is this. The girl approaches and sees that it is a note, she nervously picks it up from the floor. The note is written on behalf of a man who is sure that they want to lock him in a box and torture him. The note says they are right behind, this is where it ends. The girl reads the note and turns around in fear to see what is behind her. The creature that was pursuing her turns out to be there, a girl's piercing scream is heard. Matthew Goo walks down the corridor and hears a scream, he stops abruptly. The guy wonders why so many people are screaming today. Wang and Chu Changa explore a dark corridor where nothing can be seen. Frightened, Wang turns to Chu Changa. He gestures to him not to make noise. They both look at the door of the room, the entrance to which is barricaded. Strange sounds are heard from there. Suddenly they see a creepy looking ghost's head in the door. Van gets scared and starts screaming when he sees the creature. The sound of the creature trying to open the door is heard, but it is unable to do so because of the barricade. Chu Changa says that this is the only room with a lock and that it won't last long, Van asks what they should do in this case. Chu Changa takes the sheet and says their only option is to jump from the window. Van says that he is crazy and that they will die, Chu Changa replies that it doesn't matter whether he crashes or is killed by ghosts. At this moment, the glass on the door breaks and the ghost's hand reaches into the room. The hand reaches for the door handle, Van shouts that he prefers to die when falling from a height. He tries to open the window, but nothing new opens, Van gets scared and says that they are trapped. Chu Changa also tries to open it, Van desperately asks what they should do. Suddenly the monster's head hits something and blood gushing out of it. Van looks at what is happening in surprise, Chu Changa has a smug expression, as if he expected this. Matthew Gu becomes visible in the passage, Van rejoices at his arrival. The main character enters with a stool in his hands, which he used as an improvised weapon. Van rejoices and jumps towards the doctor, but misses and falls to the floor. Chu Changa asks if he killed the ghost, Matthew Gu replies that he saw him standing with the back of his head facing him, so he killed him. Van is surprised that ghosts are susceptible to material attacks, Chu Changa assumes that it is only because of Matthew Gu's strength. Van asks if the protagonist has killed ghosts before, he replies that he started doing this after he got here. The hero asks Chu Changa why he didn't wait for him before investigating. He replies that they are in a difficult situation and that he will explain later, he asks the hero to look at the evidence, he gives him a small book, and says that they were attacked by a ghost as soon as they found it. Chu Changa says that he will explain everything to the hero later, he gives him the book and says that they found it and were immediately attacked by a ghost. It turns out to be the journal of the Red Leader, Kosaki. The hero reads a note there that the head learned that the students were bullying Lee, and that Kosaka wanted to talk about this topic with the class. A system notification appears indicating that the hero has a secondary mission, he needs to live in the dungeon for another 5 hours, an additional reward is given for it. The hero is angry because he will not be able to leave until he completes this mission. The hero says that the truth will soon be revealed and says that the game doesn't want him to miss this task and make him spend another 5 hours here. Van assumes it's because he beat up an NPC, Matthew Gu asks why don't they do the same, Na Wang is too afraid. The hero continues to read the magazine, it says that the class promised to be friends with the girl and she asked everyone to gather in one place, the teacher thinks this is necessary for an apology. The hero finishes reading the contents of the page and turns to the next one. It says everywhere that the author was wrong. When the hero finishes reading the diary, Ben asks if that's all. The hero replies that this is enough to find out the truth. He says the girl was bullied by other students and died after she burned the others. Chu Changa asks if this means that she forced the others to show up at the warehouse, after which she started the fire, the hero adds that they returned to take revenge on her and glued paper with spells on her body to torment her after death. Wang says then it's no surprise they didn't stay the night at the school, that means they went to see a student. He says that this means their mission is completed and they will be able to leave the dungeon. Wang and Chu Changa gradually disappear in a stream of blue light, Matthew Gu advises them to be careful. The hero is left alone in the corridor when the others disappear. He reads the entry in the newspaper and sees that 10 years after the incident is today. He understands that this is why the dungeon forced him to stay here. The spirits have awakened and become stronger, and will now try to kill the main character. 
he is surprised to notice that a man is approaching him. The hero asks if this is Kosaka, the young looking girl reluctantly answers yes. The hero says that he initially thought that she was involved in this case, but in fact she was innocent, Kosaka replies that it was her fault too. She cries and says that if she had been able to notice the strange behavior of the students earlier, she could have prevented it. She says that every night she tries to enter the classroom because she hears screams from there, but she cannot go inside. She says that she can only hear the screams of the girl who relied on her. The hero says that for her own sake and for the sake of the student, she must go with him to the educational building, Kusaka replies that she can't get inside. The hero tells her to just go, and together they head out of the dorm and into the academic building. The door is locked with a lock, which is tied with a chain around the door handle. The hero picks up a boulder to break the castle, but Kosaka says it won't work. The hero nevertheless hits the stone and breaks through the door. Matthew Gu says he managed to break the school gate, so he thought he could break this door too, Kosaka is surprised. Suddenly a loud scream is heard from the building. Kosaka starts running to find the student. The hero runs into the building, but rarely stops. He doesn't know where Kosaka is and tries to find her in the pitch darkness. The hero reads the note, which states that the author will be placed in a dark box and locked up forever. Next, he finds the dead body of a rabbit in the corridor. He begins to climb the stairs and hears voices at the other end of the corridor. Matthew Gu remembers that Wang mentioned the rabbit after the children's stories. He rereads the note, which states that they will hide it in a box by the mouse hole. The hero begins to run towards the fourth class. Loud sounds are heard from the educational building. Matthew Gu runs down the corridor, the laughter of ghost students can be heard everywhere. He runs into the office and with a sharp movement opens the door. He stands in the office alone, it's quiet and there's no one around. He walks into the center of the office and kicks the table away. Mice start scattering from everywhere as he pushes the furniture away. The hero finds a long old table and leans over it. He looks down, under the table. There turns out to be a shrunken body with a piece of paper taped to it, covered with spells. The hero looks at the body and realizes that this is Lee, the deceased student. He hides the spell paper from his body's forehead. He remembers that the spell restrains the spirit, but if it is removed, the vengeful spirit will return with increased power. Suddenly he hears laughter coming from everywhere. The hero looks at the student's corpse. Suddenly the spirit awakens and begins to take revenge on its offenders. The hero wondered if Lee's spirit really began to take revenge on the students right away. The hero decides that he needs to find her spirit. After a short time, he arrives on the sixth floor. He starts to run when he sees smoke coming from the corridor. Suddenly he sees the ghosts engulfed in flames, they are screaming in the middle of a fire. The hero tries to get closer, but is stopped by a wave of heat from the fire. Kosaka comes to Lee's spirit, she apologizes for being late. Lee asks if Kosaka said Lee was worth dying for. Kosaka takes the girl's head in his hands and says that it's a lie and that she shouldn't have believed it. Kosaka says she didn't say any of this and stayed here because she wanted to take her with her. Lee looks at Kosaka, tears streaming from her eyes. The fire continues to spread across the school grounds. The hero notices that the fire is not moving towards him, and thinks that Lee probably knows that it was he who broke the spell. The hero decides that the most important thing now is to find a way to escape from here. An emergency message appears in the air that the location is under serious attack and is being destroyed. The system says that all players will be teleported in 10 seconds, a cobblestone begins to fall on the hero. He curses and covers himself before being hit with a rock. But the countdown ends at the right moment and the hero is teleported before colliding with the stone. He carefully opens his eyes, it's daytime around. A voice comes from the metal door nearby, saying that he has finally returned. The hero says that he was gone for 10 hours and asks why the cashier seemed to be 10 years older, she is angry and indignant at such an insult. She screams that the dungeon has been blown up, the hero says that he did nothing, she screams at him to remember what the mission was at school. He says the mission was to become a teacher and find out the secret of the class, the cashier asks what he was doing there then. The hero says that he learned the secret of the school, and also freed its spirit and accidentally blew up the school. The cashier shouts that he should have just found out the truth and not destroyed the school. She says that now the dungeon cannot exist, the hero asks if they can't just return the data. The cashier asks what makes him think it's data, and the hero asks if she's implying that it's not data. 
The cashier tells the hero to leave and not come back here again, since each cashier has efficiency statistics, and that he lowers her statistics. The main character leaves the booth, and the cashier finally asks what his name is, he answers. She says she understands and pushes him out, telling him to leave. The door slams behind the hero. He thinks about what's wrong with this cashier and sees her putting a sign on the door. It states that Matthew Goo and dogs are not allowed, the hero is indignant. He then turns his attention to the people on the city streets. Several cars were wrecked, the hero decided that they were dragged into the dungeons without consent. He then hears a beeping sound from the system interface and asks what it is. The main character sees a system notification that says that his account data is being downloaded. After the download completes, he sees his characteristic screen, where the indicators are still not visible. He notices that he has function points and asks what they are for. He clicks on the points to increase his strength score, but sees a message saying that he is not compatible with this feature. Then he does the same with the speed indicator, but nothing works here either. The third time he tries to increase his physical strength stat, but the notification again says that this option is not available to him. The hero is angry because he cannot add points to increase his characteristics, he decides to look at the lucky draw feature. He starts a drawing and receives a gift item, toilet paper. The hero looks at the roll in his hand with disappointment, he is unhappy with the prize he received. He throws his prize into the trash can and says that this game is unconventional. He looks at the chaos that has reigned since the game started, wrecked cars everywhere that have been involved in an accident after their driver was transported into the game. The hero thinks that there will be serious changes in the world now that the entire population has entered the game. Matthew Goo thinks that now his life will become more difficult. He sees a notification that a certain George Chu has sent a friend request. The hero agrees and adds him as a friend by pressing a button, he receives a message from Chu saying that he is near the ticket booth. The main character approaches the cash register, where he is prohibited from entering. He looks around, looking for someone he knows. The hero notices Chu Changa in the crowd, Chu asks how they will deal with such chaos caused by the start of the game. Chu Changa asks how the main character is different from the other players, he replies that he needs to be careful, because if he dies in the game, he will die in the real world. Chu Changa suggests moving to a quieter place to continue discussing their plans. The hero agrees and says that his apartment is nearby, where he can talk calmly. On the way, the hero hears someone calling him by his last name. He looks back and sees that it is Van, who is waving at him. He says it's good that he was able to find him and asks if he can come with him, Matthew Gu agrees. The three of them arrive at a large brick building. Chu Changda reads the inscription, which indicates that this is the entrance to the tunnel that leads to the Renaissance Hotel. The hero says that few people would choose this place, and that it is quiet and pleasant here. They come to the entrance to the protagonist's apartment. Wang notices that Matthew Gu's door is different from the others, it is a thick metal door. The hero replies that he has an excellent landlord who is afraid to die. Three guys walk into a neat, tidy room. The TV on the wall only shows white noise. The hero notes that the cable has disappeared, Chu Changa says that the internet and other means of communication have disappeared, so they cannot check news from all over the world. The hero remembers that somewhere he has a radio, a gift from the president of the orphanage, he decides to see if it will work. The hero begins to look for the radio in the boxes. After some time, he fishes the radio out of the box. The hero installs it, trying to tune it to the desired frequency. The radio hisses and intermittently transmits messages for the military. Then the message is cut off and the radio just hisses, Van asks what this means. Chu Changa thought about it, but didn't answer. The main character says that you can hit the radio to make it work, Van decides to prepare some food since he is very hungry. Some time passes in the protagonist's apartment. Chu Changa says that they know little information, in particular, that now all the inhabitants of the earth have become participants in the game. As they complete dungeons, they receive various rewards, he says that this information is not enough and asks if the hero has any plans. The hero suggests going to dungeons more often, since he is not safe in the ordinary world either, he believes that their lives will not yet be able to return to normal. Wang offers to eat, but Matthew Gu doesn't have much food in his refrigerator. Van interrupts his sentence due to the system interface window suddenly appearing. Chu Changa also sees the message on his interface. The main character also receives the same message and reads it with surprise. 
the system notification states that the cursed high school location quest is no longer available due to the location's destruction, and that players will receive a refund. Chu Changa says that Matthew Gu is the only one affected by the location resolution. The hero reads that the notice states that he should refrain from such behavior in the future. The main character gets angry and they say that this message is a threat. Chu Changa says that the system has offered compensation, so it can't be a threat. The hero receives a one-time voucher as compensation, which allows him to enter any dungeon as a group. He takes the voucher and says that the system is quite generous and that it is a useful thing for him. Then, after some time, all three go out into the city. They look around the shops, all the shops they found are closed, no one is working. Matthew Gu decides to look for something on the street, he suggests that perhaps they will be able to find something useful. While looking for useful things, they come across an unlocked car with cargo. Matthew Gu goes inside looking for things and asks if this is immoral, Chu Changa replies that in any case these items will not reach their recipients. The main character tells the others to help him take the boxes, Chu Changa says that he would like to remain an honest person. Van reads the shipping address on the box and is horrified to see that it is a package for a corpse refrigerator. Matthew Gu sneaks up to him and says that this is his address, Van gets scared and screams. After some time, they collected things from the truck. Chu Changa says it's time for them to go back, they collected everything in huge bags. Suddenly the main character hears the sound of the system interface. A window appears that says they have activated a special dungeon called the Hearst Driver Test Facility. The system says that more players are needed, so additional random players will be added here. The hero reads the mission objective, to obtain a hearse driver's license, difficulty is rated 6 stars. Van is indignant that this task is much more difficult than the previous one. They hear someone nearby calling Cheryl Zhao's name and turn around to look. The player with the nickname Cold Fireworks is delighted that he met Cheryl. The main character remembers that Cheryl is an actress, and thinks that it is easy to meet a celebrity in the game. The actress herself stands gloomily and does not answer the guy. Another girl complains that the dungeon has activated and she was dragged here. All participants hear an unfamiliar voice behind them, which greets everyone, they turn around. This is an NPC named Teacher Che, he says that he will not teach them anything, just counting points. He explains the rules, the task consists of a written test and a practical task, in the practical task you need to score 80 points. He goes on to explain that to complete the practical task, he will need to drive the cars behind him. The first car is a funeral service car. The second car is an ambulance, smeared in blood. The third car is a paddy wagon, covered in blood and externally damaged. The trainer says that players rarely encounter this dungeon. He says a hearse driving license is not a useless thing and that they will want one when they take the test. The mentor says that he advises not to fail tests and not to be lazy. The teacher gives another example of a playing card, sometimes it may seem useless but as the game progresses there will be situations where it will be the best possible card in the game. He invites players to go inside and start looking for answers to solve the written test inside. He adds one last detail, there are evil spirits in the building that will interfere and threaten the lives of the test participants. He laughs ominously and tells them to drive carefully. The teacher says that the test will begin now and tells the participants to go inside the building. He then adds that they may encounter demonic spirits that may disturb them and threaten their lives. He smiles sinisterly, wishes them luck and asks them to get started. The heroes come inside and find themselves in front of a long table. The teacher is standing there, Van notes that this is a creepy place. The tutor tells the participants not to cheat, as everyone will have different test items. He says participants can communicate with each other while completing tasks. The teacher comes out and wishes them not to die while completing the tasks. The teacher smiles and walks out the door of the room. He closes the door behind him with a loud knock. Van is horrified that players could die while completing a writing assignment. Matthew Gu and Chu Changa come to the task table. The main character notes that both parts of the task are very strange. He takes the worksheet and reads how the points are distributed. Chu Changa reads his test, it describes the situation. In a three-story building there are three ghosts, one for each floor, the rear asks to describe the death of each of them. Matthew Gu reads his test, where you need to find out the gender of a ghost with the surname Ma. They keep reading ridiculous, incomprehensible tests. The heroes continue to read the tests, one of them asks how the ghost of a pregnant woman will behave if she is sung a song about motherly love. 
Van says that he is sure that the wrong answer is that he will dance under the moon. Matthew Gu gloomily says that anything is possible, and this option may turn out to be correct. Wang asks Matthew Gu not to scare him, the hero grins. The following questions are no longer test questions, you need to insert the correct word there. Matthew Gu says it looks like the system generated some random questions. Van worriedly asks what they should do in this case. The hero says that the building only has three floors and that they need to look around, he suggests starting with the first one. He turns and looks around the room. The hero notices a framed photo of a man, he suggests that this may be a photo of the deceased. The rest of the challengers come up to him and look at the photo on the wall. Chu Changa suggests that they should match the ghosts mentioned in the written assignments. Wang gets scared and hides behind Chu Changa. The main character teases Van and offers to enter the room behind the door to find out what is there. One of the participants sees the main character's robe and asks if he is a doctor and if he can go with him. The actress also willingly joins them. Chu Changda looks at the girl carefully, but doesn't say anything. The main character allows them to stay with him. He goes to the door with the photo and opens it. The door creak is heard, an ominous purple glow can be seen from her slit. The door to the room opens with an unpleasant creak. The characters go inside and explore the room. There are flowers on a person's grave, on the flowers there is a ribbon with an inscription about the memory of the deceased. Next to the flowers, the heroes see a portrait of a deceased middle-aged man, Van notes that he looks creepy. The main character approaches the coffin and pushes it aside. Van screams and asks what he was planning to do. Matthew Gu replies that he is opening the coffin and telling him to help him. After some time, with friendly efforts, they push back the lid of the coffin. Everyone looks inside the coffin, but Van closes his eyes, Chu Changa asks what they could find there. The coffin turns out to be empty, there is no body or any other objects there. Matthew Gu says they didn't find anything, while Wang nervously suggests they go to some other room. Some time passes while the heroes explore the room in search of clues. The characters then return to the main room, they look at doors with photographs of dead people. The actress points to one of the rooms and says that this room is very similar to one of the previous ones. The main character comes closer and examines the portrait of the deceased. Wang asks if Matthew Gu wants to open this coffin as well, he says that in the previous room the coffin was empty. The main character tells them to carefully study the back text, he suggests that some clues can be found in the questions themselves. Chu Changa reads that the question states that there is one fierce ghost for each of the three floors. These three ghosts have the surnames Ma, Yang, and Zhao. The actress notes that the questions also include a pregnant ghost and a chatty ghost. The hero tears off the ceremonial ribbon from the memorial, this makes the rest of us uncomfortable. Chu Changda says that they have a time limit, and there are more than a hundred funeral halls on the second floor, they won't make it in time if they look at them one by one. Matthew Gu says that you need to first look for the dead with the right surnames on the first floor. Chu Changa replies that he has another clue in his version of the written test. He says the three people who died knew each other before they died, he asks what vehicles these people corresponded to. Matthew Gu agrees that the three ghosts are connected to each other and thinks that they need to solve one of the riddles in order to solve the others and catch one of the ghosts. One of the participants nervously thinks that the main character has decided to catch a ghost. The main character leaves the room and invites the others to split up and start working. The contestant gets nervous and says that they shouldn't split up because then they might face the ghost alone. The hero smiles ominously and tells them not to worry, as they will definitely meet ghosts again. While the characters explore the room, a lot of time passes. The Togos return to the central hall to exchange the information they have collected. The main character says that there are several people for each of the specified surnames, and several funeral halls at once can refer to the desired individuals. Chu Changa says that it is very good that they managed to exclude so many rooms, but still they still have a lot of work to do. Van asks if they are going to open the 19 coffins. Matthew Gu says the task is physically difficult and can take hours. He says there is no need to open every coffin, the hero says he will pass. Chu Changa volunteers to go with him, and the two of them arrive at the door. Chu Changa is looking somewhere, and the hero asks what he is watching. Chu Changa points to one of the rooms, the hero looks at her. They go inside, there is a portrait of an elderly woman with a sloppy hairstyle. The hero looks at her face and says that she looks like a potato. Chu Changa tells the hero to read the memorial inscription, 
it says that honors and fond memory are addressed to her from the Yuzu City Police. Chu Changa says that in other cases the inscriptions are written by relatives and colleagues, but here the situation is different. The hero thought, he says she couldn't work as a police officer because her hairstyle doesn't meet law enforcement standards. Chu Changa suggests that since the city police sent her flowers, there are secrets behind her death. The main character agrees and says that one of the vehicles looks like a paddy wagon, which belongs to the police. The hero builds a theory that the criminal escaped from the paddy wagon, and this woman stopped him, but died herself. The hero says that now they need to find evidence to confirm this theory. Van says that he is too zealous in searching for ghosts. The hero agrees and says in a satisfied tone that they need to open this coffin. The characters work together to open the coffin lid with a loud grinding sound. Matthew Gu bends down and places it in the coffin's crack. Suddenly everything goes dark and the participants start to panic and ask what happened. The hero hesitantly reaches out to the coffin. He touches some object and does not understand what it is so soft. Van screams in horror that something has come and tries to grab him. The rest of the participants also begin to scream in fear and run away. The hero realizes that the soft object turned out to be someone's plump belly. He leans even closer to the coffin, struggling to see what is there. Nearby, he hears someone hitting and making a knock. A vague human figure is visible behind him. He sees that it turns out to be Cheryl, who hit herself and is now sitting on the ground. The hero asks Cheryl what happened and why she didn't run away. She replies that she saw that Matthew Gu himself stayed and decided to stay here too. Cheryl asks why he didn't run away and he said his legs were numb from fear. Cheryl assures him that she can protect him, the main character asks if she has a light source, she says she has a flashlight. Cheryl turns on the flashlight and starts using it to make scary faces, the hero tells her to stop. Under the light of a flashlight, the hero notices two sheets of paper on the floor. He picks them up and begins to read what is written there, this is information about the reward for the criminal. There is information about a murder, a man was beaten to death with a blunt object and robbed. The crime occurred on September 23, 2003. The investigation found the main suspect, a man named Gunter Ma. There is a portrait of him in the article, it also says that the reward for information about the criminal is $30,000, and even more for him. The hero finds out that this killer has the right surname Ma, he sees the name on the letter, Shelley Young. The main character and Cheryl read the text of the thank you letter that they found. This letter is about the police thanking Shelley Young for providing correct information about the suspect, but the criminal managed to escape. The hero thinks that there must be some kind of connection between Shelley Young and Gunther Ma. He suggests that after Gunther Ma committed the murder, Shelley Young discovered him and reported it to the police. The letter said that Shelley should be careful because the criminal was still at large, the hero suggests that Gunther still managed to kill her. The hero says that they now have clues for one of the test questions, it asks in what order each of the ghosts in the building died. He also draws attention to another question, how many people were killed by the only male ghost of the three. The hero says that if this is really about Gunther Ma, then he killed at least two people. The main character says that they still need to find information about the third ghost in order to fully understand this story. He turns to Cheryl and says that they don't have a minute to waste and suggests they search the second floor, she agrees. The hero thinks that the ghost is supposed to be in the coffin, but they only found two sheets of paper. He suggests that the ghost was chasing someone and left the room with his coffin. Van says he was scared, he is surprised at the courage of his friends, who did not even cry out. Chu Changa says there is something strange here. Van nervously asks what's wrong. Chu Changa asks if Wang is holding Matthew Gu's hand, he answers yes. They look at the man Van is holding and Van asks why he is silent. Chu Changa warns Wang and tells him to be prepared, he opens his inventory and takes out an item. Van asks what he should be prepared for. Chu Changa turns on the flashlight he took from his inventory, shining a beam of light on the man Wang is holding by the hand. In the light it becomes clear that all this time it was not a person, but a monstrous ghost. Van begins to scream in fear when he sees the creature's face right in front of him. Some time passes, and 20 hours and 23 minutes arrive, the time for the written test is approaching. The main character and Cheryl walk together through the building. He says this floor is dedicated to the ambulance, he suggests that the first floor is dedicated to the hearse, and the third to the paddy wagon. The hero suggests looking for the nurse's station, which should be on this floor. 
Cheryl doesn't say anything and they continue down the hallway. The main character thinks that Cheryl is much better than the skittish players he dealt with before. They continue to walk along the second floor at a measured pace. The hero pays attention to something and shines a flashlight there. The flashlight points to broken glass in one of the second floor doors. Cheryl suggests walking with their backs forward so they can see what's going on behind them. The hero refuses and says that they need to quickly explore the room and not waste time. Cheryl stands behind the hero and doesn't answer. The hero thinks that he again feels someone's gaze behind him. He thinks that every time he felt this, something bad happened. He suddenly shouts to the girl to be careful and points somewhere. The girl looks at him in confusion, but says nothing. The hero shouts to warn the girl and pulls her out of danger. Glass falls into the place where she stood with a roar and breaks into fragments. The girl stands exhausted on the ground, the hero looks at the crash site. The hero thinks that it was close and that the frame fell on something. He tries to lift the girl and she makes a sound of pain. The hero apologizes and lets go of her hand, he chuckles nervously. Cheryl annoyedly tells him to warn her next time he tries to push her away, the hero agrees. The hero becomes suspicious, he looks at the place where the glass fell. The hero examines the frame, under which a trace of an impact in the shape of a man is visible. The hero assumes that the ghost that was haunting them was crushed by the frame and evaporated. The hero takes Cheryl by the hand and says that they don't have much time, they start to run. After some time they come to another room. Cheryl and the main character stand and listen to what is happening. Cheryl says that the sounds they heard have already died down, the hero assumes that the source of the sound was the ghost haunting them. The hero finally finds a newspaper mentioning a pregnant woman with the surname Zhao. The hero says that all three spirits knew each other, Gunther Ma killed Shelly Yang, and Zhao was Gunther's pregnant wife. He thinks about how Zhao Shelly Yang know each other. He decides to go to room 59, Cheryl asks if he wants to find that ghost. The hero says that he would like to catch the ghost on the second floor, Cheryl is surprised that he wanted to catch him. The hero replies that this is the only way to get all the answers. Cheryl says with satisfaction that she doesn't think this is the best option. Next, the action takes place in another location, a huge staircase is visible. Van runs as fast as he can, trying to escape from the ghost. He finds the first door he comes across and runs inside the room. He forcefully locks the door behind him, causing a loud knock to be heard. Van is terrified, he thinks that he is lucky that he was able to escape from there, he is sure that the ghost could have killed him. A ghost with a creepy face suddenly appears right in front of Van's face. Van screams at the top of his voice in horror, he's scared to death. Chu Changa grabs Wang's shoulder and pulls him towards him, he shouts that they need to run. Wang yells that he misses his mother and runs away with Chu Changa. Chu Changa says that they need to split up and meet on the second floor. Wang sees the ghost running after Chu Changa. Van notices this, but continues to run from the ghost. Wang hopes that Chu Changa will be okay and not get hurt. Van hides and shakes in fear, he says it's a terrible place and wants someone to help him. He abruptly remembers the friend calling system that is present in the system. He opens his friends list, but is surprised to find that Matthew Gu is not available to call at the moment. He looks out the window and wonders if he will automatically leave the dungeon if he jumps and dies from the fall. Van thinks that if he jumps but survives, it will be even worse, he thinks desperately that he might just fail the exam so he can leave this place. Behind him, he notices someone's silhouette at the door. Van turns around to see what is there. He falls to the ground from fear and surprise, and realizes that there is a ghost in front of him. He looks at the creature that has taken the form of a black shadow. Van doesn't understand why it's getting closer as he crawls back. He looks at the shadow with fear, unable to do anything out of fear. The shadow makes a hissing sound, which scares Van even more. Van realizes that the tent is coming because it is the shadow of a ghost that is standing behind it. He hears a roar behind him, and begins to run away from the ghost as fast as he can. He turns around while running to look at the ghost. It turns out to be the creepy, huge spirit of a cursed pregnant woman. Van runs away from the ghost as fast as he can, he shouts that he needs to hide somewhere. He thinks that he cannot allow himself to be caught by the creature and runs into one of the open rooms. Van hides under the bed and makes a wish that the ghost does not find him. He hides and really wants the ghost to pass on without detecting him. He continues to hide under the bed for a while, waiting for the ghost to leave. Van finally exhales and says that it was very close, he decides to sit here a little longer and then go. 
Suddenly, a ghost's hand appears right behind him. The creature places its hand on Van's shoulder, which frightens him, he carefully tries to look back to see the ghost. There turns out to be a creepy ghost of a dead girl, Van starts screaming. He unexpectedly sees someone else's hand appear in front of him. The man says he's glad he finally caught him and puts his hand on the ghost's arm. Wong recognizes Matthew Gu, who smiles confidently at him. Chu Changa stands on the stairs, watching the movements of the ghosts. He stares at the scene in front of him and adjusts his glasses. He turns around and starts walking in the opposite direction, at that moment, someone appears in the corridor behind him. Chu Changa goes up the stairs. He thinks about Gunther Ma and his ghost. Chu Changa leans over the papers and says that Gunther Ma is probably connected with the paddy wagon. Chu Changa is sure that Gunther is the cruel ghost of the third floor. He decides to look at his room and comes to the right door. All he had to do was find the right cell among several open prison cells. He notices something and shines a flashlight there, trying to make out an object on the wall. It turns out to be a note with information about the prisoner, it states that he was released early after 13 years in prison, but after that he killed another woman, was wanted and almost killed a policeman, after which he was sentenced to death. Chu Changa decides that his victim was Shelly Yang, he did not forget that she betrayed him and decided to kill her. Chu Changa finds it strange that the police disclosed information about his denunciation. He wonders how Gunther could have known that it was she who reported him. He continues to study the papers in search of clues, but at that moment someone enters the cell. Chu Changa looks around and sees a creepy silhouette of a man with a knife in his hand. Gunther's ghost attacks Chu Changa, trying to stab him. Chu Changa avoids the attack with a precise movement without receiving damage. He runs out of the cell and begins to run away from the ghost of the killer. He runs along the stairs, going up, in search of shelter from the monster. He runs into the room and locks the metal door behind him. Chu Changa is happy that the creature did not catch up with him. He suddenly notices something on a piece of paper and asks himself what it is. Chu Changa examines the paper in front of him for clues for the test. He reads the notice, which is information about a crime, Helen Zhao and Shelly Yang had an argument, and during the argument, the pregnant Zhao fell, causing premature labor and bleeding, resulting in death for her and the baby. Chu Changda looks at the photo where Shelly Yang has been crossed out, the photo was taken a month before the crime, he realizes that all three were friends and Gunther and Zhao were a couple. Chu Changda put all the pieces of the puzzle together, Gunther Ma committed murder and the police issued a warrant for his arrest. He told his pregnant wife where he was hiding, after which she accidentally blurted out the information to Shelly Young. After that, Shelly Young called the police and pointed to the place where Gunther was. Zhao found out who called the police and went to deal with Shelly Young. During the argument, an accident occurred and Zhao died. Gunther was in prison at the time, where he learned how his wife and unborn child died, he hated Shelly Young. Some time later, he left prison, killed Shelly Young, and then accepted the death penalty. Chu Changa leaves the room into the corridor and looks around. He is sure that he has learned the truth, but given the complexity of the task, it is probably not that easy. He is interested in what will happen in the driving test. Chu Changa thinks that maybe Shelly Yang's photo will help him somehow. Nearby, he notices Cheryl and Van walking together. Chu Changa calls out to them and they turn around, Van has a worried expression on his face. Chu Changa asks where Matthew Gu is and says that he should tell him about his findings. Van says he shouldn't tell him anything. Chu Changa asks what happened, and Wang replies that Matthew Gu caught a ghost on the second floor. Wang tells how Matthew Gu pulled the ghost out from under the bed, beat him up and found out the truth. Van remembers the fight scene with fear. Van says that he is now on the third floor and says that the ghost left after being tortured. The three of them look down the stairs. A ghost's head appears there, she carefully peeks around the corner. Van gets scared when he saws the ghost, the rest maintain their composure and remain silent. Matthew Gu suddenly appears from behind and asks what happened. Wang screams, startled by Matthew Gu's sudden appearance behind him. He hugs the main character's leg and says that there is a ghost there. The hero asks where he is. Van points down the stairs where they saw the ghost before, but now there is no one there. The main character says that he is not here, so he probably got scared and ran away. Chu Changa says that he connected all the pieces of the puzzle and wanted to tell Matthew Gu about them, but now he sees that this is not necessary. The hero gives Van some kind of heavy metal object. It turns out to be an axe covered in blood, 
and Van is instantly scared and asks what it is. Chu Changa asks where the hero found the axe, he replies that he took it from the ghost of the third floor, who tried to kill him with it, he suggests that it may still be needed during the driving test. The hero says that a lot of time has passed and that they now need to fill out a written test. He opens the door to the hall where their teacher stands. The teacher says he can't believe his eyes. The heroes stand in front of the teacher, there are three cars behind him. He looks at the main character and his companions in surprise. The characters look at him in satisfaction. The teacher says that four participants were able to survive the first stage of the test. The hero says that it was hard for them. He remembers what happened to the others, when they entered the hall, the hero noticed someone lying on the floor. It turned out to be one of the participants who looks wounded and scared. His mouth is open, the girl asks if he is dead. Chu Changa replies that he is indeed dead and that he was probably killed by ghosts. Chu Changa says that the others probably died too, but they didn't really die in the game, however, they will be left with lifeless bodies. The teacher says that they all managed to survive, he smiles and says that not everyone will be able to start the next round. He reads the character's scores and angrily notices that they all passed the test. Meanwhile, it is exactly midnight. The teacher says the written test was too easy for them. Next comes the driving test, their task in this stage is to make three laps in the car. He says that he will evaluate the work while sitting in the next chair, if the vehicle stops or stalls, the test will fail. The teacher cheerfully looks at the magazine to find who will take the test first. The hero says that he will be the first because he has number one, the teacher displeasedly asks him to choose one of the cars. Chu Changa advised him to take a paddy wagon, since Gunther's ghost could be detained using the photograph of Shelly Yang that he found. The hero says that this is not necessary, since he has experience communicating with ghosts. He says that he will become even closer with the ghost in the machine. Van asks what if something unexpected happens, Chu Changa says that something unexpected is guaranteed to happen. He says that if something happens to Matthew Gu, they will all be finished. The main character and the teacher get behind the wheel of the car and turn on the headlights. The teacher says that he can already start driving. The hero immediately accelerates, which makes the teacher surprised. They accelerate to dangerous speeds, the teacher shouts, asking what is wrong with him. The hero replies that this is an easy task, the coach holds on so as not to fall. At high speed they approach the first circle, then, after a short time, they overcome the second circle. The coach asks if he has left yet, the hero asks if we are talking about a ghost and says that he will not appear. The hero finishes the race and says that he is finished, the trainer is surprised that none of the ghosts showed up. The participants standing nearby notice that Matthew Gu went to the fourth round, they decide to move away from the car. The coach nervously asks why the hero didn't stop after completing three laps. The hero says that the brakes have failed, and the car accelerates on its own, the trainer shouts that such a problem has never happened in the dungeon. The main character thought that the teacher knew that he was a non-player character. They continue to pick up speed, the teacher shouts for the hero to stop, but he continues to accelerate and says that the brakes are not working. He tells the trainer not to be afraid, since the first dungeon the main character was in exploded after completing it, but he's okay. The teacher screams when he realizes that this is the same person who broke the cursed high school's location. The teacher shouts that it was the main character who broke the location of the cursed high school, while the hero makes a turn at high speed. The hero says that he did nothing but tear up the piece of paper with the spells drawn on it. The driver shakes with fear and tells the hero to grab the steering wheel tighter. The teacher says that he thought that there were a lot of errors and system failures in the middle school, but it turned out that it was the main character and not the system's failure. The hero says that for their safety, they must stop this car by force. The car is directed towards the participants who are standing to the side of the road. They begin to run away in panic when they see the hearse heading towards them. A sharp turn causes the car's will to fly off and point somewhere, the teacher shouts that the hero ruined their car. The hero replies that he just lost control of the car, he guarantees that everything will work out for them. The hearse crashes into the wall of a building at high speed with a deafening roar. Participants watch a car stand still after a collision. The car smokes, the main character opens its door. The hero asks if he passed the test and asks to be given a license. The teacher cannot believe that the vehicles were destroyed, the dungeon now disappears early. He angrily says that they all failed today's test. The hero says that he drove three laps before the accident, 
He assures that everything is fine, since he has a ticket and can return to retake the exam. The teacher is afraid that the main character and his friends will not return here again, so he announces that they have passed everything. They begin to disappear from the dungeon and the teacher yells at him to never appear in his dungeon again. The three of them return to the real world, to the place from which they disappeared. A dead body lies in front of them, the hero wonders where it came from here. Chu Changa notes that this is a serious incident and that there are now no passengers. Chu Changa suggests returning home to discuss all this, Wang is glad that thanks to Matthew Gu, the ghosts did not kill him. The main character looks into the distance and thinks about something. There you can see a huge structure that looks like a multicolored skyscraper, the heroes note that it had not been here before, and that it seemed to appear out of nowhere. In Chu Changa reads in the interface that the hearse driver's dungeon has just been closed. The notice states that it has suspended operations due to damage, players are offered compensation in the form of game coins. Van rejoices at the new compensation, the hero is unhappy that his name is becoming known. They see another message that players have accumulated a million coins in total, and now a trading system has been launched, thanks to which it will be possible to find goods in the supermarket for coins, this requires permits, which are issued on a limited basis, the hero is happy that he will be able to buy items with coins. But the hero wants to go right now, Van asks why go in the middle of the night, the hero replies that they need to get permission, which is given in limited quantities. The hero arrives and a girl is waiting for him at the checkout and asks what he needs, he replies that he wants three permits to the supermarket, in total it will cost 150 coins. The cashier asks if they will split the bill, or if the hero wants to pay everything himself. The hero replies that he wants to pay everything from his account, he receives three permits to enter the supermarket. The cashier finally advises them to save some coins and wait until the end of the month. She explains why this is worth doing. She says there will be a huge crowd at the supermarket at the end of the month, and he adds that he would be an easy target there. The hero asks what the girl meant when she called him an easy target, Chu Changa says that now there are thugs and robbers everywhere. A man passes next to him, Van is scared of him. He asks the main character if that person wants to rob them. They decide to go to the supermarket and head to the desired part of the city. They come to large doors that lead to a supermarket. There they are greeted by rows of smiling faces, they greet the heroes kindly in the supermarket. Immediately, merchants begin to offer them their goods, the man offers the backpack for six coins. The woman offers to buy a blanket and ten coins, they all smile politely at the character's address. The main character ignores them and heads to the department with mechanical tools. The hero examines the goods in this department. A male salesman immediately comes running to him, he asks how he can help. The hero points to one of the goods and says that this one will suit him. The man says that upon purchase he will receive a case as a gift, he says the case can disguise the instrument as a guitar. The hero looks at the price tag, it says coins, he decides that this is a reasonable price and buys the product. Chu Changda and Wang meet the main character. Van notices the huge guitar case on the protagonist's back. He asks in bewilderment if Matthew Gu bought a guitar. The hero replies that this is in case they want to rob them, and says that he does not want to fight. Chu Changa watches the store closely, he says basic necessities are on the first floor, clothing on the second, and food on the third, Van offers to buy meat for cooking. They look at the prices of goods, half a kilogram of cabbage sells for 23 coins. Rice is sold at 50 coins per half kilogram. Pork costs more than other goods, 200 coins per half a kilogram. Wang is outraged by such high prices, the seller says that it is not his fault, and that the goods are more expensive the more rare they are, and the food has become more rare. The hero suggests that this is a way to drag the player into the game, he offers to take another meat, it shows that other pork costs half as much. Wang says that rice is even cheaper, but it still takes a long time, he is upset. Van decides that today he will grill wings with her, the main character is happy that Van is such a skilled cook. Finally, they collected everything they needed, the cashier says that they charge 2050 coins for all the goods. The cashier asks if they have enough, the hero says that's enough. The cashiers talk among themselves about how the players have become better and have begun to earn more, her interlocutor shares a rumor that someone broke into the Hearst dungeon and received a thousand coins as compensation. They both wonder if the main character was that guy. The hero leaves the building onto the street after shopping. 
There is a group of people waiting for them in front of the entrance. These are armed criminals, Van is surprised to see them. Their boss asks if their pockets are deep, he states that they should give all their goods to them, otherwise they will die here, Van is frightened by the threat. The main character looks calmly at the bandit boss. He says that it is not easy to come to an agreement with him, he asks if the hero knows what happened to the previous daredevil, he hints that they killed the previous one who refused to give up his goods. The hero places his case on the ground, which surprises Van. The boss tells them to hand over their things and then they will let them go. The hero grins spontaneously, he takes the handle of his case and pulls hard, removing its contents. The hero takes out a chainsaw from the case and launches it with a creepy, threatening look. The chainsaw chain begins to rotate with a characteristic mechanical roar. The main character holds it with one hand and heads towards the bandits, his appearance intimidates criminals. The hero grabs the boss by the collar and says that this is very brave of him, he's scared too. The rest of the gang shout that the main character is a psychopath and offer to escape. The hero says in an eerie tone that it is too late to leave, he orders the bandits to give them everything they have or he will cut off their heads. The boss panics and asks the main character to calm down and that they resolve everything peacefully through negotiations. The hero tells them to add him as a friend so that he can look at their number of coins. He sees that the bandit boss only has 38 coins, he laughs at him and says that he calls himself a boss when he can't even buy a ticket to the supermarket. Van asks if the hero is afraid that the boss will return for revenge, the hero asks if he knows how to harvest Chinese green onions, Van doesn't understand why this is happening. He says that when harvesting this vegetable, you should leave small roots behind each season. The hero says that everything was fine before the game appeared, and now people are afraid to leave their homes. They enter the dorm and see the girl at the entrance behind the counter. The hero says that this is Ruby Lil, his landlord. Van blushes a little and says that Ruby Lil is a gorgeous woman. The main character tells Van that she is not only beautiful, but also extremely dangerous, and advises him to stay away from this lady. Wang says that he has some thoughts about Matthew Gu. Wang says a man once told him that if a man has a fat friend, an indifferent gentleman with glasses, random encounters with actresses and an attractive landlady, it can only mean one thing. Wang says this all points to Matthew Gu being the main character of the story, the hero himself gets irritated and tells Van not to talk nonsense. The hero looks at the interface window and says that something new has appeared. The system asks everyone to go to Hadian to take part in the Lantern Festival dungeon. He reads that at the Lantern Festival, the blessings of the ghosts will be presented in the form of lanterns. It is also stated that during the event, the Hadian area will be closed to anyone without a ticket. Chu Changda says that this is to encourage competition between players, and says that the game likes to get players interested in this way. Chu Changda asks if the hero wants to participate, given that it will take place in a month, the hero agrees, as this is a way to improve his strength. Wang tells Matthew Gu to take him with him, he agreed, but he needs to go through a few more dungeons. The hero thinks that he needs to earn as much money as possible before the holidays start and buy one thing. The next day, Wang and Chu Changa try to find the main character. Chu Changa decided that the hero must have gone into the game to earn coins. The hero reads a message that all rewards have been increased by one level. He sees that this is a five-player mission, but there is no one here except him. The hero says that the dungeon is similar to the movie The Ring, and all players here are initially cursed. Gradually, something creepy will approach the players, the hero hears the phone ringing. He approaches him and picks up the phone. The other end asks if he is Matthew Gu, he agrees and figures out from the phone number that his interlocutor is Hank Yuan. His interlocutor asks if there is any remarkable place near him so that they can find each other. They decide to meet near the sculpture, after some time, the hero comes to the statue. He sees several competitors there waiting for him. The players introduce themselves and say their names, Hanks Yuan and Molly Lin. The other members are Golden Wing and Kevin, a linguistic student. The hero introduces himself as Matthew Gu, he says he is a doctor, the others notice the guitar case and ask if he plays music. Hanks Yuan wants to talk about the game, but notices something nearby. It seems to him that something is watching them from afar. The hero says that it is already getting dark and starting to get cold outside. Hanks Yuan says that this is a dungeon with a curse, and that the situation is similar to the movie The Ring. They talk about how since they can't kill the ghost, they need to find another way. 
Hanks Yuan calms everyone down and says that the first day will be easy, since the dungeon is designed for several days. They return to their rooms for the night, a scream is heard from Matthew Gu's room. It turns out to be a monster who looks at the hero from the TV and screams at him. The hero looks at the monster on the screen and calmly chews popcorn. Suddenly the picture stops and the hero asks in disappointment why everything is frozen. A knock is heard on the door of his room, the hero gets up to check what's there. He asks who came to him, but no one answers. The knocking on the door doesn't stop, the hero looks through the door peephole. He peers through the peephole to see who is knocking on his door. He sees that there is no one on the corridor, and the knocking stops. The hero says that there is no one there and says that he will need a flashlight. The ghost's face on the screen watches him. The face whistles as it watches his actions. The hero finally finds a flashlight, and the knocking on the door continues. He approaches the door, the knocking still hasn't stopped. The hero says that he will now see who is knocking on his door, he makes a scary face using the light from a flashlight and smiles ominously. Meanwhile, outside, night had fallen. A loud bang is heard as someone closes the door. One of the participants says that it is better there, because when the door was open, it seemed to him that someone was hiding in the darkness of the corridor. Suddenly the phone rings, which scares the guy and he screams. He says he was almost scared to death by the call. Molly Lynn calls him, she says that she is scared because there is something under her bed. She is forced to speak in a whisper, and is afraid to check what is under the bed herself. Hanks assures her that everything is fine and that she should take a quiet look. She agrees to watch without getting out of bed. She gets scared when she sees something under her bed, her eyes widen in fear. She says on the phone that she saw someone's hand and hangs up. Hanks screams into the phone, worried about Molly Lynn. Other participants watch as some kind of creature appears in the corridor. As soon as they try to look, it disappears around the corner of the corridor. Another participant says that perhaps everything is not so bad and decides to call the others and find out how things are going. He dials the phone number and waits for the call. He gets scared when he hears that the line is busy and that he can't reach one of the participants. He decides to call Matthew Gu and dials his number. He picks up the phone and the guy is relieved that he's okay. He asks if Matthew Gu spoke to Huang Yu because the line was busy, the hero replies that he did not and suggests that it was a ghost. A quiet squeak is heard on the phone, and the guy asks what that sound was. Matthew Gu holds the ghost's leg and says that the ghost from the movie The Ring just crawled out of the TV. Matthew Gu resets, the guy swears because it's only the first day, and already half the team is in danger. Another team member picks up the phone and asks who is calling him. The ghost chuckles ominously and tells him not to hang up, otherwise he will die. He says it's downstairs in his room, the guy looks down and to his horror discovers that someone is standing there. The guy gets scared and the voice starts counting down. The guy hears the sounds of footsteps on the steps of the building. He drops the phone out of fear. A voice is heard from the phone that says that he is already behind him. A ghost appears behind the guy, ready to attack him. Morning arrives at the location. In the morning the main character wakes up and is glad that he managed to sleep. There is another knock on his door. The hero jumps out of bed and says that he will definitely catch this ghost. He promises that he will tear the ghost into pieces, in anger due to the constant knocking on the door. The hero opens the door to the room. Hanks Yuan and the others stand at the entrance, he says he's glad Matthew Gu is okay because he was scared when the connection went down. The hero asks if they should meet at the statue at 8 o'clock in the morning, but Hanks Yuan says that he could not reach some of the group members. The hero assumes that if they cannot be reached by phone, the ghost killed them during the night. Matthew heads forward and says they need to find out what exactly happened there. Crows are sitting on the roof and cawing. The characters walk down the hallway, scaring away the rats in the hallway. They open the door to one of the participants' room. Hanks Yuan comes through the door and asks if Farron is there. They continue walking, calling out to Farron, looking around for members of the group. Behind one of the doors they hear a loud crash. They run into the room and see Farron lying on the ground. They see him killed, enhanced by a telephone cord. The hero leans over him, he asks again about who called him. He asks if Farron could have been talking on the phone to the ghost at that moment. The participants begin to get nervous because the hero assumed the call was from a ghost. They say that dying in the game doesn't really kill you, but it still looks creepy, they say the game needs to end as soon as possible, another member suggests going to Molly's room. 
The hero goes to the phone and it makes ringing sounds, which scares the guys. The participant nervously asks who is calling. The hero picks up the phone and asks who is calling. The girl on the other end says it's Molly, she is sitting in her room on the bed. They ask what happened to her, she says she saw a hand under the bed and dropped the phone, but was afraid to reach for it. She says that she is very scared and asks him to come to her room, he agrees. She screams that something is moving here and tells them to come quickly. She screams that something is coming out of there, an eerie laugh comes from the receiver. In addition to the main character, the participants are frightened when they hear creepy laughter from the tube, the hero tells her to stay put and that he is coming to her. The others advise him not to go to her room as it is a guaranteed death. The hero says that he likes it when ghosts are cruel and says that he wants to try out new weapons on him. The rest do not understand what it is about and what the hero is talking about. Some time passes after this conversation. The hero and two other participants enter the building. They try to dissuade the protagonist, telling him to think carefully about his intention to go. The hero kicks open the door to Molly Lynn's room. There's a girl sitting there giggling non-stop. She says the hero has finally come here. She shows her creepy ghost face and laughs loudly. The hero feels disgusted by the monster. He takes the chainsaw case off his shoulder. The hero opens it with a loud click of the lock. He takes the chainsaw out of its case and places it on his shoulder. The participant says that this is not a guitar, another notes that it is now unclear which of them looks more terrifying, the ghost or Matthew Goo. The hero invites the ghost to dance while starting his chainsaw. A loud scream of a ghost is heard from behind the door to the room. One of the group members points to the body in front of him, they are both very scared. It turns out to be the body of dead Molly. The guy says Molly is dead, he covers his mouth with his hands in fear. He asks who the figure on the bed is then, they look at the bed, but it turns out to be empty. A sound is heard from the side of the bed, the guy asks what this unusual noise is. They see a flame light up near Molly's body, the guys start to panic when they see a terrible sight. The ghost in Molly's body rises and looks at the characters with an ominous smile. There is an explosion, flames appear around, and the guys cover themselves, trying to cover themselves from the fire. One of them asks where the fire came from here. The flames engulf the entire room and set the furniture on fire. Wooden cabinets and shelves are on fire, filling the room with smoke. The guy notices that this is not Molly's room and doesn't know where he ended up, he screams, asking where the others are. His partner appears from behind the burning furniture and shouts to him that he is here. He says something fell on his leg, due to his leg being crushed, he cannot move. His partner runs towards him, trying to help his friend. He asks if his partner Matthew Goo has seen him, but he says that he hasn't. One of them asks where they ended up and why everything is burning here, the second responds that it is possible that this is the place of death of the ghost. They stop in surprise when they see cracks in the ground, from which greenish light streams. Among this green glow they see a ghost, she looks at them predatorily. Guys get scared when they see a monster in front of them. The ghost begins to slowly crawl towards the guys, who are frozen in place out of fear. One asks what they should do, the second says that he does not know, and adds that he would rather burn than be caught by this monster. The ghost attacks them, charging forward, she giggles during this. The creature's hair rushes forward and tightly entangles the guys, preventing them from moving. She laughs and says that she caught them, the ghost begins to crawl towards its prey. The guy makes a sound of pain and says that they are going to die, he closes his eyes. Then a loud sound is heard, the guy looks in that direction, surprised that he is still alive. He sees Matthew Goo bending down and holding the ghost's head in his hands. He says he's a little late and apologizes for that, the guys rejoice at his arrival. Matthew Goo tells the ghost that he advises her to become a good person again and stop killing people, the guys are surprised that the main character is trying to persuade the ghost. She furiously screams that she will kill them all and tries to break free from the protagonist's grip. The hero hits the ghost's head on the floor with force. Matthew Goo takes out his chainsaw and starts cranking it up. The hero angrily says that the name of the ghost is in hell, swinging a chainsaw at her. He says he hopes she doesn't rest in peace. For some time, the hero furiously chops up the ghost's body with his chainsaw. The rest of the group is shocked, they find it hard to believe that someone could kill a ghost using only their physical strength. A notification appears saying that the source of the curse has been eliminated and the dungeon will end in 10 seconds, the countdown begins, after which the characters will be returned back to the real world. 
The dungeon is gradually being destroyed, the system counts down the seconds until the dungeon ends. Finally, the hero is returned back to his home world, he is glad that the sign did not appear this time. The hero sees the corpses of people in front of him, he reflects that the real world is increasingly sliding into hell. He presses the button to check the results of the dungeon. It states that the dungeon can no longer function, it will return to work only after a long recovery process. The compensation is 1000 coins, the hero opens the lottery menu and launches it. As a prize, the main character receives a coil of wire, it can help in some situations, but it can break. The hero assumes that this item may break the moment it is used. The hero sees a system announcement indicating that a player rating table has been created, it takes some time to load. The hero waits for it to load. He sees his name in the first place of the world's most wanted, the reasons for the search are not specified, but whoever can kill him will be sent a reward of a huge amount of coins, 10,000. The hero thinks that he is surprised that he is hated to such an extent. He heads towards the house and thinks that now he will have a hard time. In the real world, morning comes. Chu Changa asks if he has seen the world's most wanted list, the hero jokingly says that he would like to take the award for himself. Van says that the hero is very strange, the hero looks at the system interface menu. Wong thinks that he could write a novel about an unfortunate man who is wanted, Chu Changa says that he would like the main character to remain alive until then. The hero makes a thoughtful expression and Chu Changa asks what's wrong. Matthew Gu replies that he is thinking about increasing the wanted list and how to blow up the world. Wong says he is a very positive person for continuing to joke during such a difficult time, Matthew Gu replies that he is completely serious, which Wong did not expect. The hero says he wants to go to the dungeon to score points for the event, he invites his friends to come with him and Wong and Chu Changa agree. The hero says that he will surpass all players who are trying to kill him, he believes that he needs to find something useful in the dungeon in order to stay alive. The three of them come to the cash register, where the young cashier is standing. The cashier asks the hero if he is Matthew Gu, the hero replies that yes, and that he wants a ticket to the group dungeon. The cashier says that the dungeon doesn't want to deal with Matthew Gu. The hero smiles and says that he will tell an interesting fact to the cashier. He grabs the cashier by the collar and says in a threatening tone that he will get what he wanted and that the cashier should stop talking nonsense and give him a ticket. The frightened cashier agrees to give the ticket, the hero takes it and lets the guy go, he politely thanks for the ticket. The system writes that new team members will be added soon, the hero says that the number of players directly depends on the complexity of the dungeon. They appear in the dungeon, there are spotlights that illuminate the stage. There is an inscription on the sign, from which you can understand that they are in a circus. There are several other people next to the characters who are looking at the stage where one person is standing. The interface states that there are 15 players, the hero thinks that there is not a word on the page about rewards or the purpose of the task. A man on stage makes a few hand claps. It welcomes all players to a dungeon called Crazy Riddles. The man says that he is the registrar of the game, and that there will be puzzles to be solved. Fifteen players will be divided into five teams of three players, the player who answers will enter the square. The players outside will then be given a word or phrase that they must convey to the player in the cage without using words or sounds. Not only words and speech, but also lip reading are strictly prohibited. The player who answers cannot look at the board where the word is indicated, otherwise, both he and his team will face punishment. The player who answers cannot look at the board where the word is indicated, otherwise, both he and his team will face punishment. Wang says it's similar to normal games, Chu Changa says it won't be easy to win. The presenter says that the teams compete with each other, after 10 minutes, the team with the minimum number of points will lose and the responding player's cell will open from the other side. There is an evil ghost on the back of the cells, so the losing player will be killed. The host reminds that the entire team will lose if the answering player dies. The winning team will receive prizes, and their responder will receive double the amount. Next, the players are divided into teams, the main character, Wang and Chu Changa form one team. Other players also gathered in threes, forming teams. There are five groups in total, each with three people. Van asks who on their team will go into the cage and answer. The main character is sent to a cage. He says he should be in charge and goes inside. The host reads the page with information about the responding player, he announces that Matthew Gu will be in charge. Suddenly he remembers who Matthew Gu is and gets scared, 
he says he will have to take a long vacation after this. The players notice the main character and discuss how killing him can make a fortune. The presenter encourages everyone not to be distracted and choose the appropriate players in their teams. One of the teams looks confidently at the cells. One of their team members is sent to the cage. He says hello and says that his nickname is Wu Tianqi 257, the hero says that he is very self-confident. The countdown begins at 3 seconds until the start of the competition. The respondents in the cells nervously await the start of the competition. They stand in their cages until the game starts. Some of the participants behave confidently, but most are nervous. The host says that during the competition they can look at the clock, which will tell them the time. The host snaps his fingers when the countdown reaches zero. He points to an object in front of him that emits a dark purple glow, the presenter says that this is a valuable and rare item. The clock starts and the host announces the start of the game. The hero stands in a cage and ponders what word might appear now. Chu Changa and Wang see the word on the whiteboard, Van is very nervous. Van is frustrated by the difficulty of the word and doesn't know how it can be explained through gestures. The hero asks how many words are in the hidden phrase, Van shows four on his fingers, the hero thinks that this could be a stable expression. Van fakes a smile, the hero thinks that the word is probably connected with laughter. Van continues to show laughter, the hero guesses various options, about laughter, smile, energy. Their opponents are also trying to guess, one of them smiles self-confidently. The other participants are in despair and do not know what the word is. The presenter says that the time is already half over, he reminds that all guessers who fail will lose, all teams are in danger of losing right now. One of the guessers shouts out his word, conspiracy, the presenter announces that the word was guessed correctly. Chu Changa points a finger at himself and points down with the other finger. The hero asks if this word is associated with Chu Changa at a young age, he remembers an episode from his childhood and says that the hidden word is Mona Lisa. The presenter congratulates the main character's team and says that the word was guessed correctly. Van admires the hero because he guessed it, the main character thinks that the next riddles may be more difficult. The host announces that the team of the protagonist and Wu Tianqi 257 received a point in this round, and the other teams have not advanced yet, there are three minutes left until the end of the round. The hero urges his friends to quickly show the next word. Both Wang and Chu Changda look at the word nervously, the hero asks how many words are in the hidden phrase. Chu Changda shows ten fingers, but Wang only shows seven, the hero does not understand how many words he needs to guess. The remaining participants give their first answer, the first team says the answer, the border of the opposing powers, the second is to get up with the roosters, the third is to put yourself in someone else's shoes. The presenter says that the lagging teams have caught up with their rivals, and now everyone is on the same level, the countdown begins. The guessers strain and try to guess the words in the last seconds. Chu Changa and Wang are nervous as they are almost out of time. The main character grins confidently when there are only 4 seconds left. The countdown is almost over, the presenter begins to announce the result of the competition. At the last moment, the hero names the option Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and one of his opponents simultaneously names the option Kaleidoscope. Wu Tianqi and the hero call each other vile. The host says that Wu Tianqi and Matthew Gu defeated three opposing teams. The host tells the losing participants to prepare for the doors to open. The guessers in the cages scream for help, overcome with fear. They start screaming as the cage doors open, putting them within reach of the ghost. A monstrous hand grabs one of the losers and pulls him into the darkness as he screams. Eerie screams are heard from the darkness. The presenter says that none of the first three teams survived, he tells the participants to play fairly. He reminds that the entire team is eliminated if its guesser loses and dies. Wu Tianqi says that he never thought that the same thought would occur to the hero and invites him to become friends and help each other guess. The hero asks if he really wants to make friends with him, or just wants to find out his location in the real world and kill him, taking the bounty on the hero's head. The hero says that he cannot work with such a vile ally, he replies that the hero is a hypocrite. The host says that there is tension between the teams, and that it is unknown who will win this round. The hero sees an incomprehensible black fabric, the effect of the black curtain, which was activated by his opponent using the item, is triggered. A black curtain is an effect that can hide anything, preventing anyone from seeing what is behind it. The hero thinks that this is a game of riddles, and that here, first of all, 
you need to not guess, but interfere with the enemy. A black curtain covers a sign with a word that needs to be guessed in the main character's cell, his team was at a dead end. The main character tries to tear off the curtain, the hero's rival says that it is useless and that he has now lost. The host says that he was interrupted and is now ready to start the next round again. While there is a second left until the second round, the hero reaches his hand into the opponent's cage, he tells him not to rejoice ahead of time. To the great surprise of his opponent, the hero tears off the sign with the word that needs to be guessed from his opponent's cell. Both teams are shocked by this move, except for Chu Changa, who remains cool as always. Wu Tianqi says that this is a violation of the rules, but the hero replies that otherwise they would not have hung her inside if the possibility of taking her had not been conceived. Wu Tianqi tries to complain about breaking the rules, but the host ignores him. The presenter says that the game has reached a dead end, and now even he does not know what words were spared. Wu Tianqi offers to remove the curtain in exchange for his sign and continue the game as usual. The hero calmly says that he does not agree to these conditions. Wu Tianqi gets angry and asks if the main character wants everyone to lose at once. The presenter comments on their dialogue, he asks whether they will be able to reach an agreement. Wu Tianqi says that Matthew Gu is wanted, and death in this competition will be a serious obstacle for him. Wu Tianqi says that for him, unlike the hero, death does not threaten anything serious, the hero says that he will not die with him. Wu Tianqi looks at him in surprise, not understanding what the hero meant. The presenter announces that there are only five seconds left before the end. The presenter counts down the seconds until the end of the competition. Wu Tianqi looks at the hero and does not understand why he is still so calm. The presenter counts down the last second, which ends the competition. The second round ends and the door in the hero's cage opens. A terrible monster appears behind the hero, with an eye visible on his palm. The ghost has large, sharp fangs, he makes predatory sounds. The monster begins to gradually creep up on the main character. Wu Tianqi says contentedly that he will die later than the main character and that he will see him die. The ghost that crawled up to the main character suddenly stopped. The monster silently watches the character for some time. The main character calmly looks straight into the eyes of the monster. The ghost gets scared and begins to crawl away from the main character. Wu Tianqi is surprised and does not understand why the ghost came back. A bad monster appears behind Wu Tianqi, the hero says that he has already sorted out his affairs. The ghost attacks Wu Tianqi, tearing him apart, dying, he shouts that this is not the end, and that Matthew Gu will still find him. The hero waits, and gradually the noise from his opponent's cage fades away. The hero asks the host if the game is over yet. The host says that it was their mistake that they did not hire spare ghosts from other dungeons for such a case. The host announces that in this case the game is over and that their team wins the competition. The host says that this is the fourth game of this game, and they are the winners of the fourth game. The hero thinks that the presenter understands that there were previous games, therefore, his memory is not reset every time. The cage opens and the hero comes out of the cage to his team. Suddenly, he sees Wang and Chu Changa notice something and are surprised, he doesn't understand why they are so surprised. The hero assumes that something has appeared on the board and turns around to look, but does not have time. When he looks there, the inscription has already disappeared, and he does not have time to read it. Wang said that there was someone's name written there, but it disappeared too quickly for him to read it, Chu Changa didn't have time either. The host tells them to quickly pick up the prizes, two items for Matthew Gu and one each for the other team members. The host says that they can choose any item from those on the table, as well as anything that he found in the dungeon. There are a lot of different little things of all kinds on the table. The GM says that they will only be able to see the descriptions and abilities of the items after they have already left the dungeon. Van says he wants to take the coins, Chu Changa takes a blue piece of paper. The hero examines the objects, thinking what to take. He sees a creepy looking statue of a bat, whose eyes glow red. This statue adorns the large portal, the host says that they can leave this place by simply going through the portal, he warns that the portal will take all their items if they take more than their fair share. The hero asks if they can take any number of items, the presenter answers yes. The hero says that he remembers that there was a clock there, the host says that this is not a reward, and that they belong to him. The hero says that he understands and that he has no choice, he makes an unexpected leap forward. The presenter says that he is glad that the hero understands, but does not have time to finish, 
as the hero attacks him. He grabs the leader and jumps into the portal with him. Wang and Chu Changa are shocked by the protagonist's decision, Wang asks if it will work, but Chu Changa thinks it will. Chu Changa says that they can take their time and that they will expect prizes for compensation. The portal appears in the middle of the street in the real world, near the cash register, from where the heroes went to the dungeon. The cashier is surprised when he sees someone coming out. He is even more surprised when he realizes that it is the dungeon leader, who is being carried by Matthew Gu, thrown over his shoulder. The presenter, Mr. Green, is extremely surprised when he realizes where he ended up. The cashier says that unfortunately Mr. Green arrived earlier than expected. Mr. Green asks to be brought back, the cashier says they don't bring NPCs back, Matthew Gu thinks about their words and the fact that the character did not disappear from the dungeon exit. Matthew Gu says that he cannot leave since he is his reward for completing the dungeon, Mr. Green tells him to let him go. Mr. Green offers him his watch, the hero says that under certain conditions he is ready to make some concessions. A watch is a special item that allows you to save your years of life into an archive, and then return to the previous saved age. The hero is glad that this item will help him survive, the system does the analysis and then says it is incompatible with the item. He asks Mr. Green if the watch is fake, he angrily replies that no, and that the hero should finally leave. The cashier says that a notification has arrived from the game organizer, Mr. Green asks if he will be transferred to another dungeon. It turns out to be a notification that says his dungeon has suspended operations due to the absence of a leader. Mr. Green thinks about this with horror. After some time, the heroes arrive at the entrance to the supermarket. Chu Changa says that the watch, which is called the Archive, will not save you from death, the hero asks to keep them for him. Van asks why they decided to travel at night, the hero says that he won't be able to drive a car during the day. They come to the seller, who is depressed. The seller eagerly asks if they want to look at the vehicles and greets the heroes. He points to the hearse, Chu Changa says that now it becomes clear why the hero does not want to travel during the day. The seller says that the hearse does not need fuel and that it can reach great speeds. He explains that such a machine can be put into inventory and stored that way, the hero asks how many inventory slots the hearse will occupy in this way, the seller replies that there are three cells. The hero says that he agrees to buy it, the seller asks if he is sure. The seller reads that the main character is stupid because he does not have a license to the car. Suddenly he notices that the hearse has begun to move. He looks in surprise as the car drives away. The seller curses when he remembers that this is the player who was in that dungeon. The heroes are driving along the road in a hearse, developing enormous speed. Van nervously looks at the road, afraid that the hero will crash somewhere. He shouts for the hero to look at the road and be more careful. The main character tells him to hold on tight and accelerates even more. Van screams as the car jumps into the air. The hero and Chu Changa remain unperturbed, but Wan screams at the top of his lungs, he says that he will die so soon. The hearse lands with a loud thud on the road. In a series of supernaturally large jumps, the car moves across the roofs of houses. By dawn they arrive at their destination. They read the description of the festival event, entrance to the area where it takes place will be blocked to anyone who has not purchased tickets. The hero says that the festival will start in 20 days, and that they will need to find a box office that sells the corresponding tickets. Chu Changa says that they need to enter the city, since there is a high probability of finding a ticket office in densely populated areas. The hero tells Van to put the car away as they are going for a walk, it is announced. Three characters walk through the city, there is no one around them. They hear the sound of their own steps and the whistle of the wind. Chu Changa notes that the city is too quiet and that he doesn't like it. They say the city looks dead, a greenish aura is visible around the city. The heroes walk through the Puchi city, there is not a soul around, even animals and birds are absent. Van asks why it's so quiet here, Chu Changa suggests that people are too scared to leave their homes. Chu Changa says that there are cars and dead bodies lying neatly on the street. He is sure that someone maintains order in this place. The hero suggests going to the ticket kiosk. Van suddenly notices something, he shouts that there are people here. They see a police squad in front of them, the police ask what they are doing outside the house. The policeman notices that judging by their clothes, they are not locals, he says that he is the sheriff of this city, and the heroes say their names. Chu Changa calls the hero's surname, but the hero himself remains silent. 
Chu Changa says that they were passing through here and decided to stop by, he asks why locals are afraid to go out. The policeman says they shouldn't register here because an open dungeon randomly appears here sometimes. Van asks if this dungeon is really that scary, the sheriff replies that everyone who entered it died. He says that there are a lot of crazy people there, and that the heroes are lucky they didn't end up there, he asks them to leave. The hero starts talking about leaving, but Chu Changa interrupts him. An interface window appears in front of the heroes, and they are transported to the dungeon. This is a special professional dungeon with a high level of difficulty, there you need at least 50 players to start. Van asks if this dungeon is sending hundreds of players to their slaughter. The hero reads that in the dungeon all players will be divided into upper and lower classes and all lower class players will be killed for insulting the upper class. The hero waits while the dungeon adds new players and loads. Finally, the loading ends and the hero says that the dungeon begins. The hero appears on a seat next to other people, chained. So there are 32 people there. The hero cannot move, he sees that the person sitting next to him is a non-player character, since he has no information about the player. A man appears who says that they are all players. He is called the killer professor, and says that they are all sinners and belong to the lower class. Sitting people are afraid of a person. The host says this reduces the crime rate among the lower class. A man approaches the presenter and says that the cameras are ready. These cameras have a panoramic lens and can show everything the player sees. The host says that they are approaching the forbidden zone, and that he is glad that they will part soon. A transfer occurs, and the hero hears a loud sound. The hero's handcuffs opened, he doesn't understand what happened, since the rest of them are still closed. The speed increases and the hero's chair flies out of the structure. The main character flies away and begins to rapidly fly down. He falls to the ground from a great height and makes a sound of pain. He thinks that this is a cruel way to divide the players. The hero is watched through the camera. The observer in front of the monitor says that the main character looks calm, but he is sure that he will break sooner or later. The hero begins to walk down the street towards the buildings, it's late night outside. He finds a map of the mining town, he notes that this is a very large and dangerous place and that he should find a weapon. He wonders where Wang and Chu Changa ended up, Van sits on the ground in despair. Behind Van, the door opens with a creak. A creepy ghost appears there, Van looks at him with fear. 